How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another Construct 2 tutorial. In this tutorial we are starting to talk about feedback. Feedback is something that we mentioned in the game jam a whole lot and I feel that uh, my points may have been received but not necessarily delivered. I know in the mega course those who have taken it have actually put those uh, techniques to good use and so I'm gonna take bits and pieces here and there and additional stuff that's not in the mega course and over the next few weeks we're gonna be doing a lot more feedback stuff on the channel because that becomes the most important thing to me the feedback is really the test to can you watch this game without commentary can you watch this game without sound can you still feel like it's a fun game without those things because that's kind of the the layer that actually creates something that's not boring something makes something fun so the first step into doing that and this is completely optional all of these are optional some of them i think should be mandatory but these are all optional ideas is having a squash and stretch on your player i did this in my jam game a while ago uh, the link will be in the description and I think it worked out pretty well so I want to show you how you can do this so we have a retro style project I'm gonna add a new behavior and bear with me for some reason if you know the fix to this please let me know my I have my dual monitors my windows are constantly opening up on the other monitor it gets very frustrating so bear with me on that I'm gonna add the solid behavior to this if you know the answer I think it's Windows 10 uh, let me know. But anyway, so the solid behavior will be on this and we'll just kind of focus on this little guy for right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make our player animation sprites. So we've been pretty much always doing our animations and our mask. I'm going to make this kind of look like our mask. So not to get it confused, we'll call this our player animations, even though it's going to be a red rectangle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the width 8 and the height 16. So it's taller than it is wide. And I'm just going to color this in red. And then I'm going to set the origin. Now, this is actually the most important part. Wherever you set the origin from, that's where it's going to squash and stretch from. And generally, when I've been setting our animations object origin point, it's always been at the bottom, which is where you want it to squash and stretch from. So let me call this our object player animations. And let's give it our two behaviors. We need to give it behavior one of platform and then behavior two of scroll to. Let's change the speed to be 150 and the jump strength down to 450 and we can leave the default controls for now. Okay, so we have something very basic. Let's go here, change the preview browser to NWJS. And from there, let's program in our squash and our stretch. We already have our default controls. So let's go into our event sheet here and we need a trigger. So if our player platform behavior, uh, we actually want the animation trigger if we jump, that's when we want to have our squash and stretch. Now to make this reusable and to make this even more dynamic, we're going to put this in a function. So let me actually add the function object. Yeah, you can tell this is getting annoying with all these windows being on my other monitor. Uh, we're going to add the function object over here. And now that that is in our project, let's add our function on function. Wow, that's so frustrating. We're going to call this squash stretch function, just like this. And here's what I want this function to do. Now, this actually might look familiar if you're coming from a coding background. So what I want this function to really do is this. Squash stretch function with the parameter of target width and target height. And now you can add on to the parameters with delay and timing, and, and there's a lot of other parameters you could add to this, but this is the basic uh, function call that I want to make. So to do this, I need to go into this function, and I need to add this action. Let's go here to our player animations, and let's set the size. Let's bring this over here. Let's set the size to lerp between self.width, so the current width that it's at, Function.param0, so this is going to be our target width, and then 11 times delta time. The delta time, again, is the frame rate independence. This is going to speed it up, and this is going to be our, our rate that it's going to lerp between position 1 and our target width. So let's do the same thing for our height. Let's go lerp.self.height function.param1. 
11 times delta time. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, we're not done just yet. So now we are saying, okay, when we call this function, we're going to set the target width and the target height, but we need to make sure that we set it back to what it originally is. It's eight by 16. So what we need to do for that is we just need to copy and paste and set this as eight and 16. So this is good. This is, this is good, but there's no way to comprehend the fact that we actually just set the uh, scale, the size to be something different. So what we need to do is we need to put a weight in between these two actions. So let's say system weight and let's wait 0.1 second. Anything faster, I mean, maybe you can get away with 0 0.2. Uh, anything faster than that, it's not going to be quick enough to really illustrate the feedback that we're going for. So this is all good. Now we have our size. We actually just need to set the size to be something that would actually look like it's squashing and stretching. So to do that, we just have to call the function. So let's go over here, function, call function. And now just like I have written over here, we're gonna call the squash stretch function. And then parameter one is the target width. I'm sorry, parameter zero is our target width. So that's going to be the opposite of what it currently is. So our width is eight. I'm going to put our target width to 16. Our height or parameter one target height is originally 16. I'm going to flip that to eight. And that's going to be our squash and stretch call. So let's go over here. Did I put this to NW? I did. Let's hit play and let's take a look at this. So when I jump, there you go. You can see it's very basic effect. It really doesn't have much, but it's interpolating between those two positions, the current width and the target width, the current height and the, uh, I'm sorry, the current width and the target width, the current height and the target height. So that's what's really important here. And you can do this for more than just on jump. You can copy and paste this for uh, on landed, I believe. You don't really want to do it for other, other than these two, maybe like on a wall jump, something like that. You could get fancier with it. Uh, I think I just closed out of it actually. But there you go. So it's going to be, since we we're kind of falling, it had that little land in the middle. But there you go. Uh, we can even change these parameters up a little bit more. I mean, you can get creative with this and you can mess around with how you want this to look. So say when we land, the width could be completely flat and then the height can be something crazy, something like that. Uh, and just mess around and try to get a cool squash and stretch out of it. See, that's it's subtle. When you do something more extreme like that, you need a longer duration to really see it. So you kind of want to bump this up to like 0 0.4. I think that's going to be way too slow, but you don't, you never know. Yeah, there you go. You can see that it's, that's way too slow. So actually let's try putting this to something even faster. Let's put this to 0 0.05 or 0, 0.0. Let's try five. So if we put it to 0 0.05 and we hit play, there you go. It's even it's even less noticeable. And this will work really well with any animation or with anything that you're doing. I really like this effect. And I think that this effect is the start of something that's more interesting than just the regular jump up, jump down, even if you have a full character with animations. So thank you so much for watching this feedback tutorial. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more or you have any suggestions, leave a comment below. Also, make sure you like this video and share this video and everything else that you can do with this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.